Hi, good morning Finn. My name is Eabher Kohal. I'm your invigilator for the OET speaking session on the 19th of January 2020. How are you doing? Hi, good morning. I'm good. Thank you for asking. How about you? Well, I'm great. Can you tell me your full name for the record, please? My full name is Finn Corner. And what is your candidate number, please? My candidate number is 2142532533. Thank you. And you are taking this test as a nurse. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Thank you. Can I see your ID, please? Sure. Here it is. The warm-up questions are not assessed and are a chance for us to get used to each other's voices. We'll just talk for two to three minutes. All right. What motivates you to provide top-of-the-line nursing care? What motivates me is my patients recovering and leaving the hospital. We realistically see patients at some of the toughest points in their lives. Being able to come in, work a shift, and see the patients improve, little by little, until they're ready to return to their life, is the greatest reward. In any environment, whether it be outpatient, inpatient, or skilled nursing, making a positive difference in the day of each of my patients, is what drives me to become a better nurse, and it makes all the hard and emotional days worth it. Because, I know I am making a difference in the lives of others, hence, it is easy for me to get up and come to work each day. Tell me about the greatest challenge you have faced in your nursing career. I have faced many challenges throughout my nursing career as this is not an easy job and should not be taken lightly. But I think the biggest challenge I have faced is when I was transferred from the adult medicine unit to the pediatrics unit at the clinic I was working at a few years ago. While I welcomed this transfer, I was not prepared for how difficult the transition would be. With the transition, my responsibilities had significantly increased, and I was suddenly accountable for administering and understanding the pediatric vaccines. Because the pediatric vaccine schedule is so complex and time-sensitive, it was very overwhelming for me at first. I handled this situation by attending supplemental training courses and workshops to quickly familiarize myself with the different vaccines and the pediatric vaccine schedule. So, I could quickly assimilate into my new role. Do you have nursing management or leadership goals? Right now, I do not have any clear management goals as I have to gain much more experience in the nursing career. I am very interested in learning about management and leadership. So, I am interested in any committees that I could participate in and learn. I have lots of ideas and would love to be in a brainstorming group. Also, I am very interested in the management dynamics of the organization. I feel that I need to focus on being nurse right now, but I am definitely open to joining leadership groups to learn and meet new people. How many patients is a full workload for you? This is a really good question, and it really depends on the situation and the acuity of the patients that I am caring for. However, for my current position, where I am caring for hospitalized geriatric patients, I would say my capacity would be 10 patients, give or take, depending on patient acuity. I feel that one of my strongest skill sets is assessing the patients I am caring for and measuring my capacity. And when I do this, if I feel that I am becoming overloaded, I will communicate this to the charge nurse, so they can help redistribute, or offer help from ACNA. I would not ask for help unless it was absolutely needed, and I only do so, when I feel like, I cannot properly care for patients who are in my care. How do you prioritize, when multiple patients and procedures? Demand your attention at once. During my past job as a nurse in the emergency department, there were times when the action is crazy with patients coming in. During these times, I always remember that the needs of the patient come first. So my triage skills come into use to prioritize which patients are the highest priority and which ones can wait. During these particular times, communication is extremely important for patients. If they are going to have a time period to wait, I communicate that to them and check in with them when I am able to. As well during these busy times, it is equally important for our team of nurses and physicians to stay in communication. From there, 
I stay calm and handle patients with quality care one at a time. Great. Thank you very much for sharing that. So, let's move on to role play now. I'll take the part of the patients or perhaps a relative and you'll take your professional role. The purpose of the role play is to get evidence of your ability to communicate effectively with patients. Use your ability to fulfill as much of the role play as possible. Do you have any questions? No. You have up to three minutes to prepare the role play. You will start the role play after that time. I'll let you know when three minutes are up. You can ask me if there is anything you are not sure about and you can make notes on the role play card if you want to. Here's a pencil for making notes. Thank you. You can look at the card during the test, but you must return it to me at the end of the test. Please start preparing now. Thank you. Your preparation time is over. You can now start your role play. Don't worry if I stop you when the time is up. Hello Abba, my name is Finn Corner. And I am your attending nurse, here in the casualty ward. How are you feeling now? I am alright nurse. That's great. Nothing to be alarmed about your situation Abba. You are now stable. However, since you have lost a considerable amount of blood, to stabilize it, you require a blood transfusion. A blood transfusion. Nurse. I am quite upset about it. Don't be upset. Blood transfusion is an uncomplicated process. If you have some other concerns, please let me know. So that I can help you with it. Nurse, I have heard that blood transfusion has chances to make HIV infected, and I am afraid about it. 
All right. Thank you for sharing your concern. And your concern is totally fair. However, blood transfusions are usually very safe, because, donated blood is carefully tested, handled, and stored. Hence, I can reassure you that the possibility of infection is very small, and rare. But nurse, still there is a chance of getting infected, right? Your question is sensible. However, care is taken to screen donors. And the donor is selected, only if they are fit and safe. Again, the donated blood is tested for possible infections. The whole process of collection of blood, to the storage and transfusion, is done in a sterile condition. Thus eliminating the possibility of infection. Okay. I take your point. Nurse, could you please explain to me the procedure and the risks involved in blood transfusion? Of course. With pleasure. I can explain it to you step by step. Oh. That would be great. Okay, the first step is that, your blood will be tested before transfusion. It is to determine your blood group. Alright. In step 2, an identification check will ensure you receive the correct blood. Now, during the procedure, an intravenous or IV line with a needle is inserted into one of your blood vessels. The donated blood that's been stored in a plastic bag enters your bloodstream through the IV. You'll be seated or lying down for the procedure, which usually takes 1 to 4 hours. The needles and syringes used are new and sterile. Okay. I catch that. During the procedure, throughout, a nurse will monitor you and take measures of your blood pressure, temperature and heart rate. You should tell the nurse immediately if you develop some side effects such as fever, shortness of breath, chills, unusual itching, chest or back pain, a sense of uneasiness. Sure, I will. After the procedure, the needle and IV line will be removed. The whole process is done following the medical guidelines and under supervision ensuring the safety of the patient, thus eliminating risks. Oh, I see. Blood transfusions are among the most common medical procedures across the globe. Scientific research and careful medical controls make the supply of donated blood very safe. Everything under sterile conditions, new syringes, and as I told you earlier, the nurses will watch closely for your safety. All right. I got it. A low red blood count can cause you to feel fatigued and weak. If you have a lower red blood count than is normal, your body has to work harder to get enough oxygen to the cells. A low red blood cell count can cause a variety of symptoms and health complications. Hence, it is recommended to do a blood transfusion. Okay nurse. I agree with you. The important thing is that, since you lost a considerable amount of blood, the iron content in the blood which produces red blood cells will be lost. Hence making it difficult to reproduce a sufficient amount of red blood cells required for a healthy body. In such a situation blood transfusion is the best possible way. I reassure you that the blood transfusion is safe and you can trust the process. It is essential and will not cause infection as you think. Alright nurse. I understand your words. Thank you for such a good briefing. I am ready to do the blood transfusion. Good decision, Abba. I will make the necessary arrangements for your blood transfusion. Thank you. That is the end of your OIT speaking roleplay. All the best. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please, like this video and encourage us. Subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Kindly comment your suggestions and help us do better.